We are going to combine Dino and Express to create a web server, so let's just get started. What we're going to do is use this package here from GitHub called Dino Express, and I'm going to link this in the description below. What we can do is import this straight into our project. So what we're going to do is start off with a brand new project. And if you don't have Dino installed, I've got a previous video on this, and I'll link that in the description as well. Otherwise, we'll just create a new file here called webserver.ts. And we're going to import the package just here above. To create our app, what we're going to do first is we're going to define a port. And in here, I'm just going to use 3000 because that's a good one to use as a development server. Then we're going to define the app itself. And to do this, we're going to create a new instance of Expressive and we're going to call app in this case. And this will create the Express app we'll want to use. This is actually all we need to run a web server. So we can test this out. We can run app.listen and pass in the port, which is 3000 at this stage. And we can also do a console.log. And here in here, we can pass in local, host, and also the port which we're setting. And this is enough to start an instance of Dino. So to do that, we're gonna run Dino, run, and we're gonna pass in the flag allow-net. And we're gonna pass in the path for our file. In this case, it's webserver.ts. When we hit enter on that, we can see that our web server is working immediately, which is really cool. We haven't actually defined any routes, so let's start doing that now. The first thing we might want to do is create a folder, and this can be called something like public. And in here, we can define this. We can call app.use and pass in expressive. In here, we can use the method which is called static with an underscore. And with this method, we can define the path we want to be able to use for our application. So for this case, I just want to use that same path for the folder I just created, which is just public. And I'm just going to hit save on that. In here, I'm going to create an index.html. And in here, I'm just going to type in welcome for the time being, nothing too specific. We're going to rerun our web server now and give that a test. The only difference is we might need additional flags for our application to read files, but let's test this out anyway to see what we get. I'm going to run 3000 here on our port and we've got some errors here where it says that we're not able to access the file here for index.html. We'll have to pass in this flag which allows us to read the file. So to do that, we're actually going to pass in another flag here and this flag will be dash dash allow dash read. And this will make sure that we can read the index file. So when we refresh our web server now, we can read index.html, which is really cool. We could create a quick bootstrap template for our website. And here's an example of a starter kit, which essentially should get us up and running. I'm just gonna copy paste this straight into our application here and save that. And now if we give this a refresh, we should see that happening here, which is really cool. That's importing all our files, including files that are coming in from the web. What we're gonna take a look at now is creating some APIs using Express, cause that's what Express is really good at. And to be able to do that, we're gonna have to add some more configuration. And this configuration will essentially make sure that our application is able to do things like JSON requests with um, gets and puts and patches. So to start off with that, we're gonna pass in a couple of things. Let's pass in app.use uh, and we're going to call express and we're going to call simple.log. And I'm gonna call simple log simply because I want some logging while we're doing our app. And this will tell us what routes are being accessed. We're also gonna pass in app.use and expressive. And in here, we're gonna pass in body parser. And this will make sure that we can read JSON objects, which is important, especially when you're doing API requests. This is basically it. And we can actually start creating some API endpoints now. So to create our very first API endpoint, we're gonna pass in app get, and this will be a get request. We'll wanna pass in the path for our API request. So in this case, I'm just gonna pass in forward slash app API, forward slash maybe something like test. And we'll create an asynchronous request and response function here. And this will essentially just respond with maybe something like a JSON object. And in here we'll call success and pass in the variable true. Let's give that a test. I'm gonna save that. And in here, I'm gonna rerun our demo application. And once that's done, I'm gonna grab this path here for our API and pass that into the header. 
when we hit enter on that, we can see that the JSON object has worked and we're receiving that input of success is true in a JSON format. So that's pretty cool. Deno and Deno Express are brand new libraries, so they're not gonna work exactly how you expect them to. If you put in things like post requests, such as API forward slash test, the response that we're going to pass in through say Postman won't be exactly how we're used to. We're gonna have to decode it a little bit. And this is because this response doesn't exactly exist the same way as Express does. It's the raw data that you're getting across. So if we console.log out our request.body, we can have a look what I mean by this. So I'm gonna rerun the web server over here. And here in Postman, I'm gonna do a post request with a test key and a value of hello world. I'm gonna send this across. And when we do, we can see that our console log came out with lots of little numbers. And this is because it's not decoded yet. In order to decode it, we're gonna have to run let body equal new text decoder and decode the UTF-8 format here. And we'll pass in request.body here. We'll do another console.log, and in this case, we'll console log out the body, just so that you guys can see what I mean. I'll rerun the Deno server here, and what we'll do is another request to the web server. And when we do this, then we'll be able to see that we're passing in all those numbers, and then we're decoding it and getting the test hello world string come across. And these are some of the limitations that you'll have to be aware of when you're picking libraries. There are other libraries out there that do really good express-like behavior, and one of them is actually called Oak. And it essentially is doing very similar stuff to what we've done here, but it's got a number of other things like middleware and context that we'll be able to take a look at. In the next video, we'll take a look at Oak and how to set it up and use it so that you guys get a better idea of how you can use these libraries with Deno. My name's Adrian and I do videos around design and development. So if you guys like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.